Now, professor, what are the rhythms that I need to know for the NCLEX? At least the most important, the most common ones that appear on the NCLEX. Do you want to know that? If you want to know the most important and the most common rhythms seen on the NCLEX, I will share with you right now. Of course, you need to know normal sinus rhythm. You need to know what's normal. In order to identify if something is wrong, you need to know what's normal first. So you need to identify normal sinus rhythm. Basically, I will teach you how to identify it. You need to know what is the difference between normal sinus rhythm and sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia. So I will teach these three of them uh, first, where we go into more advanced uh, type of rhythms. Also, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter, supraventricular tachycardia, and heart blocks. When we talk about heart blocks, you need to know the different types of heart block. First degree heart block, second degree type 1 heart block, Second degree, type 2 heart block. That's important for the NCLEX. Third degree heart block or complete heart block. You need to know ventricular tachycardia. You need to know ventricular fibrillation. And you need to know asystole. Now, what about these rhythms you need to know for the NCLEX? Not only how to interpret them on an EKG strip, but you need to know how to treat each one of these uh, rhythms that I have described. Especially, I'm going to put the ones that are super, 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 super important for the engine. All of these are important, but the most important, you need to know atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Definitely need to know this. You need to know SVT. Very important. You need to know the blocks. And then ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. But you need to know how to treat these conditions. You need to know what are the medical interventions pharmacological interventions, nursing interventions. That's important for the NCLEX. As an example, I'll give you an example. If we're dealing with, let's say, VFib, or we're dealing with SVT, well, how do you know when do you have to do cardioversion, synchronized cardioversion, or when do you have to do defibrillation? That's important for the NCLEX. You need to know in what conditions you can defibrillate and in what conditions you can do synchronized cardioversion. For example, you need to know in what rhythms you can administer atropine as a pharmacological intervention and in what conditions Atropine is contraindicated. So it's not only recognizing the rhythm, but also developing the ability to understand and apply nursing content on how you're going to treat each one of these conditions. Now, I want to share with you, as I promised, some quick tips for the NCLEX about electrocardiogram. So here it is. Write this down because this is extremely important. Conditions that you can defibrillate, ventricular fibrillation and pulseless VTAC. Not just VTAC, pulseless ventricular tachycardia. That's when you defibrillate. Remember, Never shock a systole or 
pulseless electrical activity. We talked about atropine, symptomatic bradycardia. You give atropine first, pharmacological intervention before shock, before electricity, okay? So give atropine first in symptomatic bradycardia, then pacing if necessary. The priority in atrial fibrillation in atri and atrial flutter, as I discussed, is rate control, ventricular control, and anticoagulation to prevent stroke. And remember that whenever you're dealing with an NCLEX question, and they're telling you information about the technician that discovers something in, on the EKG monitor, remember, the priority for the nurse is to go to the patient and assess the patient first. You will not be treating a condition that was discovered or observed by somebody else. It doesn't matter how big of an emergency it looks and sounds. You need to assess the patient first and not only pay attention to what the monitor is saying.